the skies over Bristol are filled with hot air balloons for one long weekend. Founded 35 years ago, it has become the biggest event of its kind in Europe. This year's Fiesta sees over 120 balloonists from across the world. This time around, however, there's to be no mass launch on the first morning. There may be a few people fly, but I don't think many will fly free this morning. If you look at the clouds, you can see they're going along quite quickly. So this means that, that there's a high wind a little bit above the ground, and as the air mixes during the day, that will be a high wind at the surface. Makes landing a little bit difficult. Don Cameron is the festival's founder. Now 74, the Scotsman was the first man to cross the Sahara and the Alps by balloon and the second to make it across the Atlantic. The organisers have said this morning that only pilots with more than 250 hours may fly because conditions will be a little bit difficult. The joint start involves only a handful of balloons instead of 120, but there's no shortage of spectators, with some having arrived as early as the pilots at 5am. Over the four days, the organisers are as usual expecting half a million visitors. We come from Taiwan. Taiwan. China. 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 <laughs> Our first time to uh, Bristol Festival. And it's really great. I'm disappointed they can't all go up together, but I think it's because of the weather. Simon Watley is an amateur balloonist from Bristol. Jenny McLaughlin and Andy Bennett are locals. They won this high altitude trip in a radio competition. A bit nervous, but excited. Up, up and away. Just go with the wind. So um, in Bristol, you, you can get any direction. This is quite common because you have the, uh, the Bristol Channel funnels the air. Bristol is also home to Cameron Balloons, the world's largest manufacturer of hot air balloons. The firm was founded by Don Cameron in 1971. The boss is currently at the Fiesta Grounds, but production continues unabated. The firm has customers around the globe. Nick Purvis has worked here for 32 years. There's the sporting market, which you would find very typically in Europe. There is the safari and tourist market, which you would find uh, in places like uh, Kenya, in uh, Turkey, in Egypt, uh, where people go for balloon safari rides. And then there's a, a competition market uh, where people are using balloons for racing or for expeditions traveling across continents and oceans. And that's a, a very specialist part of our uh, market. Each balloon's fabric, known as an envelope, is made using old sewing machines. There's a good reason for that. Our balloons go all over the world, and one of the things that we've got to remember is that when the safari balloons, as we have here on my left, are out in the bush, if they get damaged, they need to be repaired on a simple machine with very unsophisticated techniques. We have to produce a balloon that's capable of uh, being serviced by such simple means, and hence we don't use specialist machines for much of our work. The ride in Simon Watley's gondola ends some two hours later, around 30 kilometers from the Balloon Fiesta grounds. The pilots are picked up by their teams once they've located them. Another festival highlight are the night glows. Here balloons light up the night sky accompanied by musical rhythms.